will continue for some time lecture 2 content that is the microsensor introduction. I was discussing on the characteristics of sensor. There are certain parameters which are known as a dynamic characteristics of sensor. There namely the warm up time, frequency response, speed response, lower cut off frequency, phase shift, resonant frequency and damping. So, these parameters also you have to take care of which are not mentioned in lecture 2. That means, a resonant frequency and damping is a critical parameter when you go for designing an inertial sensor. For example, accelerometers or gyros. Speed response is important for any kind of transient phenomena if you want to detect then is very important and frequency response is important for any of the sensors which deals with electrical signal. So, these are basically the dynamic characteristics and all these characteristics are how the sensor is behaving with all these dynamic parameters that one should know before he use he or she use those sensors in actual application. Now, what are the detection means of sensors? Detection means may be biological, may be chemical, electric, magnetic or electromagnetic. Detection means may be heat or temperature, mechanical displacement or wave, radioactivity, radiation. These are various kinds of detection means. And now the conversion phenomena. So, what physical reaction or what physical change is going to take place inside the sensor because of which you are getting output with the variation of the input stimulus. What are the, those conversion phenomena? In case of biological, the conversion phenomena may be biochemical transformation, may be physical transformation, may be effects on taste organism. That means, some bi biological phenomena may take place if you apply certain chemical into that biological species or body that is effects on different taste organism then spectroscopy. So, these are the conversion phenomena. Okay. In case of the chemical sensors, chemical sensors, so what are the conversion phenomena? They are namely chemical transformation, physical transformation electrochemical process and spectroscopy. Spectroscopy means frequency change or if the electrical signal if you take at the output, it is a fixed frequency spectrum or uh, the band changes that is the basically spectroscopy, spectroscopic change. Now, in case of physical sensors, what are the conversion phenomena? They are thermoelectric, photoelectric, magnetoelectric. That means, you see from physical means here the thermal energy, optical energy and magnetic energy. So, thermal energy you are getting at the output electric, optical energy photon you are getting at the output electric or magnetic energy or magnetic flux is changed into electric energy. All these are the conversion and the all belong to the physical and that is the thermoelectric, photoelectric and magnetoelectric. Now, other conversion phenomena is output is a magnetic. So, change of magnetic flux. So, that can be changed if you incident some light on that body that is known as photomagnetic. If elastic property is changed of the body, then magnetic energy may change. There are certain materials. If you change its elastic properties, magnetic flux, uh, magnetic behavior, magnetic property of that particular will be, will be changed say permeability may change by changing the elastic energy or application of elastic energy into that material. Thermomagnetic, if you change the temperature of that particular material, its magnetic property or permeability of that particular um, uh, body may change. So, those are one kind of conversion phenomena. Thermoelastic and photoelastic is another, that means elastic property will change 
that means what is elastic property? Strain components will change, different strain components may change and then with effect of the thermal energy or photon energy. Photon energy means irradiation by optic, optical energy or light. So, if, if uh, it is irradiated on thermal energy or the optical energy is incident, its elastic coefficient or elastic property of that particular material may change. That is one, one kind of conversion. Then elastoelectric, elastoelectric means if the elastic properties are changed, its electrical behavior will change. What are the electric behavior? Permittivity and permeability of material may change. If you apply elastic elastic energy or that means elastic energy means strain or, or stress. So, if you apply that deformation or if you apply some stress on their body and if you elongate that particular material, then what happens? So, the electric property means its dipole moment may change, for example, its, its uh, per, permittivity may change. Okay. So, this is basically the change of the, elect, uh, uh, the, the electric property for the change of the elastic, uh, elastic uh, energy onto the body. Then thermo optic, thermo optic is another conversion phenomenon that is the, uh, the thermal energy is incident on a body, its optical property may change or the optical energy is, is, a, is, a, is a body is exposed to optical radiation, its thermal property will change its temperature may change or its kinetic energy of the molecules may change and then automatically it will lead to the change of temperature. These are the conversion phenomena in case of physical sensors. Now, the transducer classifications by electrical property or signal type. This table basically uh, the, uh, the given this table gives you the property of the signal descriptor and example along with the, the actuator examples also. That means classifications of transducer. So, property for example, the resistance descriptor is resistive, example of the sensor is the magneto resistor and example of the actuator is piezo resistor. So, the, the sensor is magneto resistance and actuator is piezo resistor. That means Piezo means is a, is a displacement or mechanical property is going to change of the particular crystal that is uh, with a change of resistance. So, that is a piezo resistance or if you apply mechanical stress or strain, a resistance may change. Capacitance if you look into is descriptor is capacitive and sensor is a chemical capacitor and its actuator is electrostatic motor. In case of inductance, then descriptor is inductive and sensor is inductive proximity sensor and example of the actuator is induction motor. On the other hand, if you see the signal, then voltage signal deals with the, uh, with, 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 with the sensor which is thermocouple and it is a post descriptor is potentiometric. Current change, the descriptor is amperometric and its example of the sensor is fuel cell and actuator is solenoid valve. Okay. Charge if you concentrate the signal as a charge or charge or electronic charge, then it is a descriptor is a coulombic and sensor example is a piezoelectric and the actuator is electrostatic uh, resonator. Similarly, frequency you can get acoustic wave as the sensor and the stepper motor is basically the example of the actuator. So, this with this uh, actually I give you some introduction of the microsensors, what are the basic uh, blocks in a sensor, its characteristics, its properties and when you select a particular sensor, what are the parameters one should uh, look into for judge a sensor good or bad. So, these are the things which I discussed in this lecture. Now, in the next lecture, I will switch over to the sensor evaluation, evolutions, microsensor evolution, evolutions and at the same time, I will discuss on the market survey. So, as an engineer, you should always see how the market uh, behaves or 
how much is the market for a particular product or quantity. So, that is very important aspect and before production of a particular device. So, for that I will switch over to uh, the new topic and that is uh, the evolution of, 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 of microsensors and MEMS and its market survey. Okay. Now, here again I start with Feynman's vision in 1959 when Feynman visionary, he is a great visionary and he told us that there is a plenty of room at the bottom. At the same time, he predicted that the entire encyclopedia could be written on the head of a pin. And his vision in 1959 is close to the reality in 2004 because of the miniaturization of the devices, miniaturization of the systems. At the same time, the miniaturization of the sensors has made successful of the dream of Feynman, which was, was published in 1950 nine in a famous paper by Feynman. And at that time, he also predicted the it is possible to fabricate a motor with a volume less than 1 64th of an inch. That means, that time one could not foresee the mechanical things can be miniaturized. But now, it is also possible because of the evolution of the MEMS. Now, micro motors are available whose dimension are few millimeter by few millimeter and obviously, it can be reduced still further with innovations of new technologies, new processes, new materials and then Feynman's vision will be successful obviously in the near future and it is close to the reality. Now, if you look back from the transistor discovery, which is 1947, then comes planar silicon technology is 1950, then comes integrated circuits 1960. And after that, there are two areas. One area is, is uh, uh, meant for the silicon VLSI and another area is the micro mechanics or micro machining and on the other hand MEMS. So, it has basically got importance in 1970 and from there in 1982 when Peterson paper came and people thought extensively and how to improve, how to progress with that particular area that is MEMS or micro machining area. So, now again I am giving you the Moore's law and the Moore's law here it shows the evolution of the computers with the miniaturization of the components. Now, here is the microprocessor the 4004, which is basically uh, transistor count is 1000 in 1970 and then a 286 processor or 386 processor is nearly 1985 and whose transistor count is 100,000 in a chip in the processor. Then next generation is 486 DX processor that is nearly 1990 and it is it's 10 to the power 6 number of transistors means 1 million. 1 million transistor in 486 that is nearly 1990, then comes Pentium, Pentium processor, then Pentium 2, now Pentium 3, now Pentium 4 at present. And Pentium 4 you say 100 million transistors are there in Pentium 4 and at present the people are thinking of 1 billion transistor in a chip in a processor. So, these are the evolution of the VLSI as per the Moore's law, but the MEMS evolution does not exactly follow the Moore's law. It is a, is a different, a different space it is advancing and yet to find such a law which is which satisfy the evolution of the MEMS or microsystems. Now, 
if you look into the evolution of MEMS, the actual thing started in 1954 by paper by C.J. Smith and that is the property of the silicon, a unique property of silicon which is piezoelectric property and that has been observed by C.J. Smith and the paper came out in 1954. Then people started thinking the why not silicon can be used for the, uh, the sensors or MEMS. Why the silicon is, is giving importance is clear to you because it is compatible with the integrated circuits and VLSI. Then in 1980, the micro machining technology evolved and photolithography etching recognized as a tool of micro machining because earlier the photolithography etching was used in case of patterning of VLSI, uh, uh, VLSI uh, components or VLSI fabrication, photolithography technique and etching technique was used and in a micro machining means here the same technology, but little bit difference is there. Here the aspect ratio may be different which is used in case of VLSI is not used in case of micro machining. If you change the aspect ratio, then many cases you have to uh, machine a particular material whose protective layer was not known that time. That means passivation layer was not known that you have to do some research, but people started thinking that it is possible that is now from 1980 the micro machining uh, uh, came into limelight and then uh, the lot of research has been taking place in micro machining and at present this field uh, is very promising and uh, one can foresee various kinds of sensors using the micro machining which is basically the photolithography and etching, etching technique employed in case of VLSI fabrication. In 1982, the famous paper which is published in Proceedings IEEE, which is the silicon as an excellent material. Silicon was known to be excellent material for integrated circuits and VLSI, but later on they found it is also excellent mechanical material because silicon mechanical properties are also excellent. So, it can be used for sensor which is which will sense the mechanical behavior of any of any body or any system. So, that is why the silicon is a entered into the MEMS area in a big way. And after that, there is a mushrooming growth of the MEMS uh, uh, industries has taken place because it has a very good market potential. So, lot of companies small size big size, size companies are coming up to initiate the MEMS research and uh, to market uh, or to produce MEMS device commercially. Now, semiconductor sensors discovery phase if I see it is 1947 to 1960 is a discovery phase. Then technology development phase I have mentioned is 1960 to 1970 is a basic technology development phase. Then batch process phase is 70 to 80 in case of semiconductor sensor. Then micro machining phase 1980 to till date. So, these are the different phases of evolution of semiconductor micro sensors. Now, last 10 years people call the decade of microprocessor because you have seen the evolution of microprocessor from the Moore's law curve that lot of evolution and lot of improvement is, is has been taken place in last 10 years. That is why that was known as the decade of microprocessors. And next in years, 10 years people are predicting, so that will be decade of micro sensors, micro sensors and MEMS. And now, the if you look into the chronology of the MEMS development, then we can see from 1975 to 1989, basically micro machining, silicon, MEMS and micro systems. 79, the first MEMS accelerometer was reported and 1993, it has been commercialized by Stanford University research effort has enabled analog devices to commercialize some MEMS accelerometer nearly 1993. In 1990, surface micro machining advanced MEMS technology compatible with CMOS process came and which is which has lot of application in automotive, medical, IT and industry, military and aerospace. So, then 
market. So, let us now uh, discuss little bit on MEMS market in different area. The characteristics of the MEMS market are fragmented because of different amount of application in different areas. Even then, the cumulative annual growth rate of the MEMS market is nearly 25 percent. Today, large volume applications of MEMS device are in the area of inkjet head in case of pressure and acceleration sensors for automobile application and pressure sensors for medical application. These three area big market at present. One is inkjet head, other is basically pressure sensors and acceleration sensors. Application areas are automotive application and medical application. Now, new killer applications expected. Those at present, this market is not very big, but within one or two years, it will be the killer applications. What are those areas? One is the RMMs for wireless communication. You know, at present, lot of wireless devices are coming up because one 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 example is your mobile mobile handset. So for that, lot of RF MEMS components are required, and mobile handset they use lot of miniaturized components. Then opto MEMS for telecommunication application, it may restart, but not within the next 24 months. People are predicting. Other is a killer applications is bio MEMS. A strong growth since 1997 for DNA chip and prote proteomic chip, but very fragmented in terms of applications and technologies. Major growth areas of MEMS, they use a specific process to make devices for key customers, that is the application specific. Now, if you look the market growth in terms of US dollar, then this table gives that automotive, medical, IT and industrial application, military and aerospace and the total market of MEMS in terms of millions of US dollar. You see 1996 automotive is 355 million US dollar, medical 165, information technology and industrial control is 492 million US dollar market and military application is defense is 62 million US dollar total is 1074. Now, in 2000 and 2004, if you look this two year, the market in comparison with 1996, then you can see here that every four year, the market has almost doubled. So, here 355 to 646, from 646, it is nearly 1172. So, almost double is the total growth you can see here. 1074 in 1996 is 3604 million US dollar in 2004. So, that means market is picking up. Now, the sales of MEMS device in term MEMS device particular application wise is compared in this table in 1996 and 2003. So, inkjet printer heads, mass flow sensors, Biolab chips is which is microfluidic chips in 1996 it is a 400 to 500 euros million euros and 2003 it is 3000 to 4450 million euros. You can see the chain pressure sensors automotive and medical which is unique devices pressure sensor it application or is automotive medical or industrial from nearly 400 to 800 in 1996 and it is 1100 to 2150 million euros in 2003. Accelerometer and gyros and basically inertial sensor application areas are automotive and aerospace. You see 350 to 540 in 1996 and 2003 is 700 to 1400 million euros. Now, optical switch and disclose which is optical MEMS, optical application is very small, was very small in 1996. Now, slowly it is picking up and in 2003, 440 to 950 millions of euros 
and other application areas are micro relay sensors, disk heads, etc. So, total total uh, uh, in a device level total the market from 1675 to 2890 million euros to now it is becoming 12,000 million euros if you include all the devices. Now, the P chart shows here the relative size of the current wall MEMS market in terms of application areas. So, here you can see here that pressure sensor the total P area if you see the major application areas one is the pressure which is 3.4 major application then comes the optical switching area then is the inertial sensor 2.7 mass data storage is 1 and others is 1.2 these are the the proportionate uh, the application areas for different uh, uh, different application okay now profiles of mems fab around the globe so who are working on mems nearly 50 big players are there around the globe they are controlling the whole market and they are producing nearly 800000 devising devices per year and target on the market with specific products products is picking up for small and medium sized fabs nearly 40 to 60 persons we call it is a medium sized fab lot of medium sized fabs are there in europe or taiwan in japan also their target key customers are specific because uh, they produce a particular sensor for typical application not very large quantity some medium size and this market is picking up tremendously and if you if you look into the medium size fab total investment is not enormous but profit is more if you if you concentrate on some specific products not in all fields so here the application in the range of 10000 of devices per year not like 800000 devices per year and a good part of engineering work in order to start in order to test the feasibility of a specific application is required for small and medium size fabs now typical profiles of the mems fab and total fab at present is 350 mems mems fab worldwide and there the business is still growing and as i mentioned the cumulative annual growth rate is nearly 25 percent specific products within medium volume or big part of the business are there the number of manufacturing facilities is growing fast with a strong investment in europe taiwan and china now we will see the country wise what are the distribution of the fabs now here if you look this diagram major portion is taken by north america it is about 41 percent of the total fabs are in north america next share is in japan it is about 12 percent of the total fab is in japan next is the europe and in europe if you divide different countries then comes first is the germany is a 10 percent then comes say uh, the six percent both france and scandinavian countries then benelux is five percent switzerland four percent and uk four percent rest of the europe means east to east european countries they they contribute three percent of the total fabs but here if you see the asia picture of asia so there japan is separated out from rest of asia because they are the major major uh, fabs and major r d activities is going on in japan that's why it japan itself is 12 percent and rest of asia is only nine percent so this is the countrywide dis distribution and now the characteristics of europe north america and asia in terms of the uh, the uh, fabs in terms of the number of people in terms of the device production and in terms of the companies 
are shown in this table. So, in 2001 in Europe, 120 companies were there, North America had 160 and Asia 70. People working in the company, in Europe it is nearly 5000, out of that 4500 is R&D. So, North America nearly 6000 people and Asia very small amount of people is, is a 1000. That is basically the, I am talking about in fact. So, now number of processed foreign to is 800,000 in Europe, 1.5 million in North America and 500,000 in Asia. There is a strong growth in Taiwan. Estimated sales 1 billion euro, Europe is selling, North America 2 to 2.5 billion euros and Asian data is, are not available. Major established players in Europe are BOSS, Sensonor, VTI, Hamlin, XFAB and Balti and North America is analog devices AD, Hewlett Packard, TI, Texas Instruments, Honeywell and Dell P. In Asia, Denso, Samsung is a Korean company you know and Melco, these are the Asian players. Now, some of the companies are growing. In case of Europe, you can see Tronics, Bemscap and the Silex, Microfab, Microparts, they are coming in a big way in Europe. North America similarly, similar 50 companies are there and Asia, the growing companies are APM and Walsin and some others in Korea. Now, the country wise picture Europe, if you look here, then very fragmented markets with few large volume application in MEMS products, mainly automotive and inkjet heads, they are concentrating. If you look into microfluidic or microarray activities, that is in Europe is doing service oriented work in microfluidic, some companies telling they need microfluidic sensor in this area, this much amount, they are on that, not in mass scale production. Polymer micro application is emerging strongly in Europe. Strong presence in DNA microarrays and protein arrays that is also coming up in Europe. In optical side, A to start, they are beginning the optical MEMS, MEMS uh, uh, R&D is there, but in fabrication finished product, they are yet to restart the, uh, the production. Strong R&D in some new companies is, is getting uh, momentum now, nowadays in Europe. Now look into the North America. So, here strong presence in high volume markets such as automotive and IT in case of North America. In microfluidics and microarrays, strong position of the USA, 40 percent market share in DNA chip business, 40 percent mark, 40 percent market share in DNA chip. So, that is, is, is basically in biomems, uh, the USA is going ahead among many other countries. Very low level of activities in the polymer MEMS field. As I mentioned earlier also, the polymer MEMS is getting importance very recently with the discovery of the active devices using the polymer material like field effect transistor is now being produced in a, a, a using the polymer and it has been demonstrated. So, if it is so, then the MEMS devices particularly the bio MEMS device polymer is also biocompatible. So, uh, bio, bio MEMS can easily be fabricated using the polymer material. So, you can easily integrate the active devices as well as the sensors and actuators total using the polymer. That is why not in production level, but R and D level people are interested much at present to do the polymer MEMS research. Okay? And that is why very low level of activities in polymer MEMS field, but it is getting getting importance day by day. Very big stop in the opto business, because although people are predicting that optical area, 
lot of MEMS applications will be there in case of the optical switches and uh, power splitter, couplers, optical. So, but there are a lot of technological barriers and problem. So, that is why the companies at present are not coming up. Most of the work is in R and D laboratories. So, that is why it is written very big stop in the opto business. Until unless R and D is mature in the laboratory scale, so company may not invest uh, the fund into the opto MEMS research or MEMS production or R and D business R and D whatever you, you call. Okay. Now, coming to the Asia, Asia actually divided into two part, one is a Japan, another is outside Japan. So, in Japan, lot of regional research efforts is there, a lot of cohesiveness among the different companies are there and there in Asia, they are the, uh, the, uh, the, the one of the important uh, 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 country who looks ahead in terms of business compared to other Asian countries. So, that is why lot of commercial, commercialization is taking place under the root or roof of big companies in Japan in MEMS and microsystem area. But in micro arrays and microfluidics, the initiative has launched in 2001 and they are picking up slowly in this particular field which has lot tremendous potential in biomedical application. Outside Japan, if you look, there are lot of players there, particularly in three country, one is in Korea, other is Taiwan and rest is and other one is China. So, many startup companies has come up in Korea and they are yet to produce the commercial products into the market. Large investments are there in Taiwan in MEMS foundries and in China they have initiated R&D investment and lot of R&D in institutes has come up there A large investments are being made in R&D in China maybe within few years they also they will also start production of the MEMS sensors and devices and microsystems which may be comparable to Japan or any other countries. They are very emerging R and D is there in case in China. These are the three major player outside Japan in the in Asia, Asian region. If you talk about the Indian scenario, here a uh, lot of R and D is going on under the umbrella of government funding, but industry has not come up so far aggressively because here uh, the, the microelectronics market, microelectronics foundry was not that much progressing in India you know, not many fabs are microelectronics fabs are there. Actually the MEMS fab emerges from the microelectronics fab. So, that is why the MEMS industry has not come up till now, but R and D effort is there maybe in future some companies come up maybe in a small level not in big level to produce the MEMS devices uh, in some specific application. Now, this is the last uh, slide in this lecture it is a wild worldwide major players in MEMS along with the application areas. Now, here application areas are shown, one is aeronautics and aerospace, process control and instrumentation, defense, medical and biomedical, telecommunication, automotive, home appliance and IT and entertainment. These are the different application areas and some companies are given important in, in, in some area, those company names are mentioned here. For example, aeronautics and aerospace. The companies are BAE Systems, Systrons, Donor, Aeronautics and Honeywell and in case of process control and instrumentation, Colibris, Tronics and Microsystems, these are, they are involved mainly on these products. In defense area, 
BAE systems, silicon sensing systems, shop, radir, cistron, donor and other many companies are coming up here. In medical and biomedical area, Affymetrix, Agilent, Cornic, Nanogen, Debiotech, Toshiba, Gyros, Caliper and so on. They are concentrating on medical and biomedical. And IT and entertainment sector, if you look here, the companies like HP and uh, the Olivetti from Italy, Panasonic, Japan, Texas Instrument, USA, Sony from Japan, Olympus, there are a lot of companies in IT and entertainment. There you will find a lot of companies from Japan also. In telecommunication areas, analog device is one of the major contender here. The applied MEMS, Colibris, Chronos, IntelliSense, MEMS Optical and so on. Their ST Microelectronics also one of the important um, foundry company who is uh, producing MEMS and micro, uh, MEMS devices which will be used for telecommunication application. And automotive application which is major market in major MEMS market, their analog devices BOSS and DALSA semiconductor, Delphi, Denso are there in case of automotive application. The mainly the sensors used in automobile application are the acceleration sensors, pressure sensors and some cases uh, the, uh, the mechanical sensors are also there and temperature sensors in a limited fashion is there. Home appliance, you can see the companies are analog device, MET, METU and HL, Planar Technic, there are, they are, they, they are uh, in home appliance. Home appliance means a uh, uh, lot of the household uh, electronic uh, machines are using nowadays MEM sensor, one application area in case of uh, the washing machine, dishwasher, these are some home, home appliance. So, uh, there uh, people have started using the MEMS based, the acceleration sensors, uh, pressure sensors and other things, position sensors, displacement sensors, these are uh, being used in home appliance and other equipment. Okay. So, uh, the, uh, so I gave you uh, some of the, uh, some of the important uh, uh, figures deals with the markets of the MEMS and in conclusion I can say although the MEMS market is not similar to the VLSI market, but it is picking up slowly. People have identified the application areas, people, had, people have seen the advantages of the MEMS and micro, micro machine devices compared to bulk devices used in early cases. And at most, you will have seen the, the cost or the uh, cost performance ratio of those MEMS devices. It has shown an important poten uh, very specific potential in future microsystems. It has lot of promise. So, R and D is picking up day by day in a major way and maybe within few years you will find that MEMS market will uh, nearly touch the VLSI market also. So, with this let me stop here with this lecture. In the ne next lecture, I will discuss on the application areas with examples. Applications I discuss little bit today's lecture and first lecture also, but specific areas of application with little bit principle of application, I will discuss in the next lecture. So, let me stop here today.